Hey Church, <clears throat> my name's John Brace Girdle and uh, we're in the middle of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. We're believing for breakthrough, healing, transformation. And I want to speak to you today about a breakthrough in finance and money. You know, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 6.10, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So what that's telling us is that money can merely have a strong grip on people's lives and Jesus revealed this in, in Mark 10, 21, when he asked the rich young ruler to give everything away. Jesus didn't tell everybody he met to give all their money away, just this rich young ruler. And I believe it's because money had a real grip on his life. And, uh, you know, he proved that it did because the rich young ruler couldn't do what Jesus said, even though his eternity depended on it. And uh, he, he went away. Uh, just withholding and um, it's un 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 <clears throat> sorry it's important to understand uh, what what the, the grip money, money can actually have on our lives so it's also important to understand these concepts you know, especially with money and finances because they can get a, a grip of our lives really quickly however you know we live in the kingdom of God and we believe for breakthrough, so um, we can pray for breakthrough in this area. But I, I don't believe that we, we can isolate our breakthroughs just to our money. Money is just so intrinsically linked to everything else that I just believe if we're believing for breakthrough in our money from finance, then we've got to believe for breakthrough in every other area of your life. If you've spent any time with me whatsoever, uh, you know that uh, one of my foundational scriptures is Matthew 6, 25 to 34. And I'll read it to you. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about your clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If this is how your God clothes the grass of the field which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. What a scripture. You know, I listened to a, a podcast recently and it just gave me a renewed appreciation for, for this scripture. And uh, I just want to share it with you. You know, what this scripture is saying is that if, if you could just do one thing, if, you just, if I could just give you one key to breakthrough in every area of your life, what would you pursue? It covers a financial breakthrough, it covers your health, it just covers everything. What would your response be? I'd hope it'd be, bring it on. Well, we've just said it. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Again, what are these things? It's, it's your health. It's a healthy marriage. It's a great job. It's financial and money breakthrough. It's, it's in fact, all these things is everything you need to live out this life to the max and with his purpose. You know, salvation is a free gift, but once we are saved, there's a mandate. It's a request by God to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Have you ever played hide and seek as a kid? You know, somebody goes and hides and you go and seek him out, or you go and hide stuff and uh, somebody's got to go and find it. Well, God has hidden away in life, in his word, in your journey, in your purpose, in your future, treasures. He's hidden them away, treasures that he commands you to go and seek. These treasures are valuable, important for you. They're for your breakthrough, they're for the next stage of your life. He's not just going to give you them because he's commanded you to seek them. 
I hear you ask, why is God the, hiding these things from me? But he's not hiding them from you. He's hiding them for you. He's hiding for them for you so you can discover them on your journey. Listen, if I told you that, when you came to church on Sunday, I went back to your house and I hid a million pounds somewhere in your house. It could be in your wardrobe. It could be behind the bath panel. It could be in the ceiling. It could be behind the plaster in the walls, hidden in the roof. What would you do? You would go and seek. You'd go and seek with vigor. You'd go and seek with strength. You'd go and seek with passion. You'd go and seek with tenacity. You'd take a sledgehammer and not worrying about what you damage or how much it cost to fix. You'd just go into that house and you'd smash it apart until you found everything, until you found that million pounds. This is the passion and vigor that God wants when he, he wants you to seek him. What's he teaching us in this scripture? Don't worry, don't worry about your finances, about your breakthrough, because I've got something valuable I want you to seek. I want you to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and everything you need for life will be given. Everything you need for life and godliness will be given. Your financial breakthrough is on the other end of you seeking first his kingdom. The job you need or the pay rise is at the other end of you seeking first his kingdom. What walls are you going to smash down? What's going to stop you from seeking him first? What, what, what passion and vigour, what's going to motivate you to, to walk, walk through everything that, that you need to, to make sure you're going to seek him first? So I want us to pray today. I want us to pray for the following points. Number one, I want us to pray that like we've lost something and you're trying to find it. I want you to pray with power and authority and I want you to ask God to teach you how to seek him. Let's pray that we become a seeking church, that nothing stands in our way but our pursuit of him. Knowing everything we need, everything we desire will be given to us as long as we put him first. And let's pray as we seek him, let a breakthrough come into our lives in the realms of finances because you've made a decision not to pursue money or wealth, but you want to pursue first his kingdom and his righteousness. Let him prove to you that he is immeasurably more, that he can do immeasurably more than you can ask, think or imagine. God bless you church. I love being part of this community and being able to share with you today.